and we're back in the mechanical room. So we have a no heat call. Um, apparently there was some issues with the zoning system here, which just by looking at it, I can tell there's issues, uh, where some of the rooms are still getting air when they're not supposed to. Um, but that's our secondary issue. Uh, the main issue is last night, they smelled the burning smell and the breaker tripped. So here's the breaker. Clearly it's in the tripped position. So we need to see what's going on with this thing. So here we go. All right, so I'm gonna to attempt to reset this. It's off and on. We have power. The, this is an ECM blower motor and it is making a weird noise. So let's see if we can get the fan to call. Okay, so we're in the checkout mode. This is a HZ432 zone panel by Honeywell. And let's go ahead and kick on the fan. Okay, not doing anything. Let's see if our inducer works. Now we're gonna go to heat. Inducer appears to be fine. I think we lost our fan. Okay, so I removed the high voltage portion plug for the ECM motor. I want to verify that I have high voltage going to it. Whether there's a call or not, there should always be high voltage going to that. So we want to verify that the board is still here. Okay, so we do have voltage, so that's a good sign. Okay, so we're calling for fan. I heard the click. It's not doing anything. I have no amps. So I'm pretty sure that motor's toast. We're going to go ahead and pull it, see what's up. All right, so we got the blower removed. Um, we're going to go ahead and get this out. Uh, this right here is a shipping bracket, so this is supposed to be removed on install. That didn't happen. Uh, but yeah, we'll get this out. Okay, so we have some visual evidence that it burnt up. Right there. So yeah. So this motor's definitely failed. It probably popped the breaker when it failed, but... Um, so let's open her up. Yeah, so that's not all supposed to be covered in blackness, but you can see that the little capacitor thingy exploded. Um, here's pieces of it right here. The motor looks like it may be shot too. But let's zoom it out and check. Okay, so we're checking our windings and we're getting 4.5 on one and two. And then two and three. 4.5 and then one and three. So basically you check this out like it's a uh, three phase motor. Yeah, so the windings are still, well, they're kind of bouncing around, so it's probably not good. Uh, let's see if we can go to ground. Yeah, well, oh, nope, it's an open line. So this motor could possibly be okay, uh, but we're not gonna risk it. So, yeah, but this, this ECM is just done for. Uh, so it, it more of something like caught fire. So uh, we're going to have to replace the motor and the module. Uh, this is a Coleman, so usually they don't sell them individually. You have to get both anyway. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it's, it's done for. All right, we got our new motor and our new module. So we'll go ahead and, and assemble that and reinstall it. So here's what the module used to look like. You can see this little black thing right here. This is what exploded. Uh, so yeah, so we'll go ahead and put this together, put that back in there and go from there. Okay, you're gonna use this here to hold that side in. Okay, I just wanna get that lined up. This is the shipping bracket. We're not going to reinstall that. Okay. All right, so we're putting the motor back in. All right, so you can see there's water here. There's obviously some kind of water leak happening. I'm going to, uh, they've, 
left the original transformer down here and then replaced it with this one. This is so it can power both the control system and the zone board. Um, I would have just had two transformers, but that's just me. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move, I'm going to take this one out and I'm going to move that one over there just so it's not having water dripping on it. All right, we got the blower motor in there. Uh, I moved the uh, transformer down there just so it's not getting dripped water on and I removed the old one. Uh, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and power this up and uh, we'll go ahead and start testing and then we'll see if we can get figure out what's going on with the zoning. All right, furnace flipping on. All right, so I'm in checkout mode. I'm just going to use this to turn things on. Uh, we'll start with the fan. There she goes. We're going to go ahead and then put her in cool mode. So when she's in cool, that's when it's going to run full blast. All right, so the fan's been running. It's running at 12.2-ish amps uh, in fan mode. That's just like, it's pretty much full blast. Uh, so the maximum on this is 17 amps. That's the RLA, I believe. Or below that, but still, I feel like it shouldn't be running that fast on uh, this mode. Well, let's go ahead and test the dampers and go from there. Okay, so I put the door back on just because I want it to act like it normally would. Uh, so we're connected to the meter wirelessly. Um, I'm gonna put it in cool mode just to get the thing to run in full blast. It's generally, the fan will run in the you know fastest mode possible. So in fan mode, so calling for G, we were getting about 12 amps. So let's see what we get in cooling. So with the door off, we're pulling in more air, so it's actually increasing the static pressure. Uh, so it's more volume, it has to move, so it puts a higher load on it, so that's why it's a little bit lower. Uh, but why was it running full blast in just fan mode? Alright, let me take it out of cool. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and verify that these are all aligned properly. So, the thing that concerns me with this is it's running full blast, which means it's trying to push 2000 CFM. Uh, because it has a 2000 CFM air conditioner, but in fan mode, it's running at full blast. So, these ducts are way undersized. Whenever you undersize a blower, uh, undersize a duct system with a ECM air, constant airflow motor, it's going to try to ramp up even more. So, this thing's probably running at 110% because it's trying to overcome the small ducts, and then on top of that, it's zoned. We may need to adjust this a little more to kind of balance it out. Right now it's in fan mode and it's full blast. So, yeah, this motor is going to burn out too. These ducts are way too small. We're trying to move 2000 CFM out of, what size is that? That's probably like, maybe that's a 12, that's a 10. That looks like a 7 or an 8. And then this is, I don't even know what this is. This is probably a... An eight. Yeah, it's ridiculous. No, that's a twelve. Two twelves and two eights. No, a two twelves, a ten, and an eight. Yeah, that's ridiculous. No wonder the blower motor exploded. Okay, so I've drilled holes under here uh, so I can see everything. And this is a fourteen. This is a twelve. That is a ten, and this is a, also a twelve. So definitely undersized. Um, we're going to go ahead and see if our bedimetric damper is actually functioning properly. Uh, this one doesn't seem like it's completely lined up, so it's like open but not all the way. So I'm wondering if maybe some of these aren't closing properly. So let's go ahead and close zone one. That's going to be this guy here. You can see it closing in there. So this one is in fact closed. Parametric damper is... So it's not closing completely. So we need to realign this one. Let's go ahead and check this one. All right, zone three is seated all the way. Is it? Oh, no, it's not. It's not seated all the way. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, so that one's not seated all the way. Let's check this one. Seal these holes with tape when we're done. But I always like to make access holes so I can verify that it's actually closing all the way. 
Alright, so here's something interesting. You see the there's the green wire, there's three wires hooked up. You only need two because these are power close only. These are hooked up to the board as open and close. So we're gonna disconnect that. So whoever did this didn't really know what they were doing. That middle one's for an optional LED, so you can hook up like a bunch of LED lights. That way you know when these things, are, it's like a remote light. So like, see how it's got the green light? You can run a remote light somewhere else. That's what those are for. It's not gonna hurt anything, but we don't need it, so we're gonna disconnect it, because I don't need 24 volts running to stuff that doesn't need to be running to things. Okay, so I got all the M4s removed. Um, so that middle one, basically whenever this is open, it sends 24 volts from M4 out. So if that, when that thing's calling for closed, it's sending 24 volts back into this. And that can't be good for these things. Um, from what I understand, some of these, one of these has already been replaced. I'm not sure exactly which one. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and realign these. So what I've done is I've disconnected the fan uh, on the equipment output of the zone board. That way the fan doesn't run because otherwise it's gonna blow my damper all over the place. So the idea is I get it into the closed position, remove it, align it, make sure it's all the way closed, put it back on, and then cycle. All right, let's go ahead and do it. All right, we got all the dampers realigned. So we're gonna go ahead and reconnect everything, get these holes sealed up, uh, and then we'll go ahead and start checking every supply event and see if we can figure out what's going on. But I suspect they messed up the ductwork somehow. Okay, so I currently am only calling for fan from one zone. I'm not sure which one's which. I've removed two of the thermostats um, and I'm getting air in one of the zones I don't want. So I'm thinking that maybe something's up with that. So I'm gonna pull that one off the wall and see if we're still getting the call. All right, so I removed the zone that was calling. So that looks like that was zone two. So that's when, so the main room is zone one. That's zone two, that's gonna be uh, what do you call it? The guest area, and then that's the office. So when I, so for some reason, the thermostat in zone two is calling for fan, even though it's turned off. Okay, so currently it's not doing anything. Everything's turned off. This orange wire here goes to the relay that's in there, and that energizes this guy, the humidifier. So I think what's happening is I think the thermostat is trying to engage the, ther the humidifier, so it's calling for fan. So er there's four thermostats and each one has a humidifier connection point. But the problem with that is that's not going to, if one of them, if, if one zone is asking for humidification, it's gonna ask for fan while the other zone is heating or cooling. So you're gonna get spillover, so we need to, uh, make basically disable the humidifier from all the thermostats except the main one. Um, I think that is our issue. So let's give it a shot. Okay, so we do that. We go here, then we want to go to settings, then we want to go to installation settings, equipment, reconfigure equipment. This is an Ecobee, by the way. Looks like it's the newer one. It's got a much bigger screen. Yeah, uh huh. On transformer, variable speed. Okay. No accessory installed. Furnace. Buy the furnace. Done. All right. So now we got to do that one more time. And I've already tested that zone that kept running. It's off right now. So that's a good sign. So we got to do one more. All right, so this is zone one. This is the only one that I have running right now, so we're gonna check our airflow. All right, this is zone two. I have everything off. I was getting airflow, but now I have nothing. So I think we fixed the issue. All right, so this zone two literally is that one supply. It just does the bathroom. <laughs> so the master bedroom continues to run when this one is off, and that's because it's connected to the master. So I just wanted to do a recap on this because I totally just forgot to continue to record but uh, so basically the original call was there's an issue with the zoning somebody else went out there um, they found a bad zone damper which they replaced um, but they couldn't figure out what was really going on they just didn't have enough time really I think it was like the end of day or something uh, so I got a call back that's the night after where they where they got the smell 
Uh, I showed up, we found the dead blower motor, uh, went back the following day after I was able to order that motor. Uh, thankfully, it was under warranty because that thing was ridiculously expensive. I cannot believe how much they charge for those things. Uh, but anyway, came back the next day, installed the blower motor, and as you saw, I found two um, two of the dampers were not lined up properly. So basically, when it was closed, it was still cracking, so a little bit of air was passing through, so you got a little bit of bleed over. Uh, and that's kind of normal with zoning is you're going to get a little bit of bleed over. Um, so I, I wasn't too worried about that, but we went ahead and realigned those. Um, the ducting is way too small, so it's causing that, that constant airflow system to just run full blast because it's trying to maintain about 2,000 CFM, uh, so it's going to just ramp up and run full blast. Uh, then we found that zone, so zone one is the main area. That's like the entryway, the dining room, the kitchen, the living room. Uh, zone two was just that bathroom, which had one supply. So when that thing is on, it's just blasted air. Um, so they thought, and then the master bedroom, they thought that that thermostat in the bathroom controlled the master bedroom. So they're like, okay, well, we turned it off and it's still running. And that's because it's connected to zone one, which is the main area. Um, so then zone three controls a guest room they have, which has its own bathroom. And then it also controls the entryway uh, from the garage. Um, and that was zone three. And then zone four was an upstairs office. So yeah, that basically I had to go through with the anometer and measure airflow from every single one to really map out the zone because half the problem was they didn't know what thermostat controlled what zone. So once we got that all figured out, that was great. Um, basically, I told them that the ducts are all too small. Everything, so that, that uh, furnace is actually in the basement and uh, all the ducts are inside the, you know, they're basically in the floor because that there's there's the lower floor, then there's the upper floor, and the yeah, and the upper floor, all the ductwork is in the floor. So it's probably like six inches. I figure there's probably two by sixes in there. I don't know. Maybe it's there's more space, who knows? But yeah, the whole system is undersized, and from what I could tell is um this was an add-on, so there wasn't always zoning there. It was just added on after the fact. So they probably reused the ducting because you would have had to rip up the floors to, you know, actually check the size of the ducts and resize everything. So yeah, the, and like I, I told them, yeah, this blower mode is going to fail again. So they hopefully it fails before 2030 because that's when their warranty runs out. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I just wanted to explain all that for you just to kind of summarize it because it was kind of a complicated call for a five-ton system you need bigger ducts and the return was too small. I think it was like a 20 by 25 filter on there. And you're probably saying, oh, you should check static pressure. I already know it's high. <laughs> I mean, that, that constant airflow ECM motor was running full blast in fan mode. So yeah, so I did loosen up that barometric damper for the bypass, which should help a little bit, but that that duct system needs the zone system needs to go if if they're going to do it they need to get rid of that zone system because it's 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 running full blast when every single zone is open so i can only imagine what it's like when they're just heating that bathroom <laughs> so but anyway uh if you come across this situation uh hopefully this helps you out so thanks for watching make sure you like and subscribe comment tell me what a horrible technician i am hit that bell notification and follow me on instagram and facebook and if you want to support the channel Pick up some tools from my Amazon store, uh, or you can get some work socks from Camel City Mill. Links are in the description below. We'll see you on the next one.